Dear Liberlanders, thank you for joining us the fifth anniversary of Liberland. It has been a remarkable time with some remarkable achievements. There is no doubt that Liberland is the most successful startup nation in the new millennium. And we have done some extraordinary things with some 600,000 people now on board and supporting Liberland. We have built our representative offices in more than 100 countries around the world. We have attracted the, the most famous and the greatest scholars in the liberty world that are joining us today. So I'm more than excited that the things are coming together after five years. Some people are a bit impatient. They think that starting a country is a summer holiday job. But it's not the case. Some things just need to take time. And right now we've got the best experts in the areas of technology, diplomacy and commerce to come together and build a new society. Today we have 27 speakers ahead of us and I believe you will have much better understanding of what our plans are. There are no doubt many challenges ahead of Liberland and we have a lot of work to do, especially in our constitutional effort. Right now we have got four constitutional drafts and we still need more intellectual force uh, to make the blockchain governance reality. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today for Lieberland's fifth anniversary. My name is Adam Carswell. I'm also the host of the Lieberland Show, the podcast of our great nation. Some other big names. Um, in the next block, we do have John Daly joining us. Uh, I know his background is pretty remarkable. How do we get a connection with him? Well, John Daly is is one of those European uh, is one of those European Commission guys that really lived through being in the European Commission, and he's got a experience that he wants to share with us. Uh, it is it is pretty crazy. It's wild, and people should understand uh, how the politics works from insider that has done it for so many years. But I also hope he will come and actually share with us some of the some of the interesting things that we should not forget about when once we are putting together our governance. Uh, so I really believe that his experience could help us a lot. Give it up for Eugene Romenko. Hey Adam, well, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being here and for organizers who have made such an amazing gift for us. We're joining the second section of the Liberland's fifth anniversary conference. In this section, we're going to have the brilliant constellation of speakers you may see their names on the scale. Just listen to their names. John Dali. So let me probably announce our next or first, the second one, distinguished speaker is John Dali. He is a former Maltese politician who served as a cabinet minister in various Maltese governments for more than 20 years. He was European Commissioner for Health and Consumer Policy. Unfortunately, we can't have him live today. So he will be on video talking about how to learn mistakes from mistakes of other governments. I can't ask my turn on the video. Democracies were conceived to ensure that power rests with the people who would have control over their destinies. All citizens should be equal before the law and should have equal access to legislative processes. Governments and institutions which have been labeling themselves as democracies are far from fulfilling these tenets and are not run for the people, but rather they sacrifice the citizen to gratify big business and the brothers in the bureaucracy. I will give a few examples based on my experience of the hypocrisy and corruption within the European institutions and the governments that conspire with them or that are pressured into cooperation. In 1970, I entered politics in the executive of the youth movement of the party. In 1981, I resigned from the management position in the private sector and contested the elections. Malta was then fast developing into a socialist dictatorship. In 1984, there were two attacks on my house within weeks of each other, an incursion that terrified my wife and an arson attempt. I was first elected to Parliament in 1987 and then was re-elected five other more successive times. I was given ministerial responsibilities from the start, 16 years managing the economy and finance, 
six months as foreign minister and two years in social policy. During this tenure of near 12 years, I managed to turn around the Maltese economy from a socialist controlled economy to a social market economy, liberalizing the economy, upgrading the industrial base and creating a service sector in shipping, e-commerce and financial services. Tax collection was organized and VET was introduced. Laws were enacted to support a firm and flexible regulatory regime. The economic transformation contributed to five consecutive election victories for the Nationalist Party, with a two-year blip. The socialists abandoned their controlled economic policy and adopted a market-oriented strategy. I consider this to be my biggest achievement. On the 10th February 2010, I was appointed to the College of, U of the European Commission, responsible for health and consumer policy. I managed my portfolio in a hands-on manner and made sure that I am informed on all aspects by all interested parties. I talked to MEPs, NGOs, organizations and individuals, even those who were considered undesirable by the EU headship and whom my secretary tried to block from me meeting me. I sought to get all sides and angles to any issue and did not allow myself to be controlled and led around by the bureaucracy. The first confrontation with President Barroso came in the 2011 Libyan uprising. The Arab, Arab Spring was never meant to include Libya, and I urged against interference. I was proved right. The major issue came with my aggressive pursuit of a tobacco products directive intended to reduce tobacco use. The President tried to stop my initiative. I refused to comply. Over 600,000 European citizens die every year from smoking-related disease. On two occasions, the Secretary General of the Commission forced my services to postpone the directive. Finally, their only option was to get me out of the way. When this was done, my Secretariat was called into the office of the Secretary General and told that the Tobacco di Products Directive was in suspended animation. I immediately started campaigning in the media and in the European Parliament for the TBD to be kept on track and the presidency retreated. My performance increased support amongst the Maltese people. It also fomented envy and hate of the frustrated opposition and the megalomaniacs in my own party who saw me as a threat to their ambition to grab power. The constant attacks, defamations and hate mongering came from alliances made amongst those who wanted to destroy my reputation in Malta, elements from both political parties and from youth officials who wanted to stop my initiatives and to cover up for their illegalities. The first attack came in 2004 from then Prime Minister Lawrence Gonzi and his cronies merely two months after taking office. This was based on fraudulent reports concocted by people within his own office. Gonzi forced me to resign from cabinet. Within weeks of making the false report, the author was sentenced to two years in jail for fraud. It took Godse four years and an upcoming election to admit in public that all accusations against me were false and baseless. An interesting fact is that at the time of the attack, I was in Washington meeting with Foreign Secretary Colin Powell to discuss developments in Libya. Godse tried to have me cancel this meeting. I refused and went on with the meeting. To stop the TPD, Barroso directed DG Olaf Giovanni Kessler to open an investigation against me based on a report passed to them by the tobacco lobby through Barroso's friend Michel, Michel Petit. These reports of the tobacco lobby was proved to be false, but Kessler proceeded with haste, breaking all semblance of legality and respect of human rights. Olaf issued a report that confirmed that I was not involved in any wrongdoing and that the decision-making process of the Commission was not impaired in any way. But they concocted an excuse based on circumstantial evidence for Barroso to remove me. Barroso refused to show me this report when he forced me to my resignation. This report was highly criticized by the Olaf Supervisor Committee, by NGOs such as Corporate Europe Observatory, and influential media not suborned by the Commission. I instituted action against Swedish match and Olaf for defamation. The Commission interfered in the work of the Belgian police and did not permit them to interrogate Giovanni Kessler and the Olaf staff on the so-called investigation they conducted. This confrontation between the Commission and the investigators lasted three years. Still, 
the Belgian investigators arraigned Swedish match Giovanni Kessler and Dex, standing for Olaf Staff, in the court of first instance in Brussels. The case is still pending and there are rumours that too many people stand against the solution. In the meantime, the smokeless tobacco lobby office that was used in the setup against me was closed and the Giovanni Kessler was removed from Olaf. The persecution by Kessler in collaboration with the megalomaniacs and other political adversaries in Malta persists up till this day. This saga of collusion, conspiracy, hypocrisy and corruption is drawn from my own personal experience. It shows how the citizen has been obliterated from the mindset of those who have sworn to defend their interests. That is why the idea of Lieberland, a country with minimal government and bureaucracy, and which is built on equality, human rights, is intriguing. It must be said that this is a very, is a very nebulous, idealistic objective. Occupying a piece of land which is disputed by two neighbouring countries does not augur well for stability and peace of mind and whoever decides to get involved. I augur that you keep the citizen at the centre of your objectives. Such initiatives can succeed if they ensure that the rights guaranteed to every individual are balanced by the responsibility that should be respected in exercising these rights. Equality in front of the law is vital to a democracy. Everyone from the highest official in the administration down should be held responsible for his action. No one should be immune and allowed to evade justice because of any position that he might hold, allowing him to get away with atrocities and vindictive persecutions against my citizen, any citizen. The provision in your constitution, no law shall prohibit video and or audio recording of any agent of the public administration in public space and, and whilst on duty, is a step in the right direction. Yours is a long uphill climb. Good luck. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. John Dali. Thank you for sharing your ideas and your values with us, Liberal Anders, and hope you will join us uh, in 2021 at the sixth anniversary of Liberal Land. Much. Let's let's check other questions. And while I'm doing, I I, I need to ask you, how do you feel, guys, on the Liberal Land first anniversary? Is the fact great? Great. It's not it's as cold as the last one. To see, excited to see so many people uh, focused on their sovereignty and their liberty. You know, freedom is not lost. And let me mix a question from Alexander Beck with question to other speakers for not your answering too long. Okay. So uh, is more powerful citizen voted more than two or four votes? The question is coming for, for maybe Sam. Worm applauses in line for you, dear panelists, dear speakers of the second section of the Liberland Fifth Anniversary Conference, John Daly, Sam Kazarian, Christian Saussure, Walter Block, Sarah McKenna, Vahid Tusi, Brock Pierce, Michael Yates, and Eric Bjork. Thanks for joining us today. And we are going on a short next Zamnion Space break for 10 minutes. Stay tuned, dear attendees. Join us in a 10 minutes. Thank you very much at the third section of the Liberland Fifth Anniversary Council's Conference. Eugene Kirtensi, Nicholas, thank you. All right. Let's go for some bar success. Cool. So please confirm if you hear me well. Yeah, we do hear you well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Nice. So let me quickly start well, this and check the microphone. All right. So another break, and we are here at the sunset.